The war for the, the internet, for the has, internet begun. has begun. Welcome to Welcome AM TV News. News. The silicon tip, tip, tip of the spear of freedom. 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 sure who that guy was, but uh, welcome back to AMTV News. I'm your anchor, Tim from Morrison. It's Friday. It's finally Friday, February 22nd, 2013. On February 12th, President Barack Obama had this to say. Now our enemies are also seeking the ability to sabotage our power grid, our financial institutions, our air traffic control systems. We cannot look back years from now and wonder why we did nothing in the face of real threats to our security and our economy. And that's why earlier today, I signed a new executive order that will strengthen our cyber defenses by increasing information sharing and developing standards to protect our national security, our jobs, and our privacy. One week later on February 19th, Obama's assertions were miraculously and conveniently validated. Internet security firm Mandiant released a detailed and scathing report blaming the Chinese army for a clandestine campaign of state-sponsored cyber warfare against the United States based out of one single innocuous building located in Shanghai. Mandiant is quickly being seen as a sort of digital blackwater, home to many ex-government employees, including its founder, Kevin Mandia, ex-Air Force cyber crime investigator who counts 30% of the Fortune 500 as clients and boasts countless connections through its board and leadership to the U.S. government. In 2011, as anxiety spread about Chinese hacking, the once small Mandiant caught a couple of whales. Principal investors One Equity Partners, the private investment arm of J.P. Morgan Chase & Company, and Kleiner Perkins Caulfield & Byers, one of the largest and most established venture capital firms, according to the Wall Street Journal, and responsible for seeding companies like Google, Genentech, AOL, Netscape, and among dozens of others, Amazon.com. Needless to say, Mandiant is laced up. According to Ted Schlein, a KPC and B partner outside of the NSA, I would guess Mandiant knows more about advanced persistent threats than anyone in the world. If this is true, and considering the NSA, through its illegal eavesdropping program, Stellar Wind, developed by now whistleblower William Binney, has a bazillions of bytes of data stored in its gleaming new multi-billion dollar mini Pentagon in Bluffdale, Utah. Mandiant is the biggest, but potentially the scariest fish in a growing school of internet security firms like Silence, CrowdStrike, and Kroll Advisory Solution, all of whose roles in protecting the nation's critical systems, both public and private, and what rules of engagement they function under are still being debated. How does China feel about all of this? The Chinese military has been the target of a considerable number of cyber attacks. This according to China's Defense Ministry spokesperson, Geng Yangsheng. Rather than blaming the US government, he conceded IP addresses can be disguised. The US, however, has been scrambling for ways to levy pressure on China after years of trade imbalance, loss of manufacturing, currency manipulation, piracy, and Taiwan. Cybersecurity is a new way for Washington and its military industrial complex to levy new pressure. This often discussed complex, a web of which a couple of years ago, the Washington Post exposed, consists of over 1,200 government organizations and nearly 2,000 private companies who work on programs related to counterterrorism, homeland security, and intelligence in over 10,000 locations across the United States. Adding even more weight to the Chinese rebuttal is evidence Kevin Mandia's previous employer, the US Air Force, sought from private data security firms like HB Gary the ability to create and manage a veritable army of fake virtual people, aka bogus IP addresses. You can use it to manufacture consent or plant a digital false flag in your backyard. As many of the Fortune 500, both clients and investors of Mandiant, back draconian legislation such as SOPA, PIPA, and CISPA, threatening the freedom and anonymity of the internet, allegations by Chinese professors, military experts, and industry leaders that lobbying groups and private companies are using this threat as a convenient way for Washington to seek and increase its defense funding in large cybersecurity forces and to push Congress to pass legislation that has thus far failed to pass due to public opposition, sure carries a lot more weight. Mandiant's revelations may in fact be true, but the question is, are our freedoms and liberties currently enjoyed worth jeopardizing for the sake of security? 
We have unfortunately been forced to answer this question many times since 9-11. Moreover, Mandion is able to detect and no doubt potentially rout these evildoers. Isn't our current paradigm good enough? Doesn't Congress have other priorities to address? Capturing every corner of the alternative media, watch AMTV News Monday through Friday. Follow me on Twitter and like us on Facebook using the links below. And find in our source links and more videos like these, visit amtvmedia.com, part of the AMTV Network, the voice of independence.